Ignore any potential time jumps and, um, okay, just gonna sort of, that'll be good, right? Hi, it's Zam back from the Rubik's Cubed, and today I have a big unboxing from the cubicle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick look here. Just gonna start grabbing things. Here we have Mr. M. He should be a pretty interesting puzzle to look at. And then we have a lot of MS puzzles here. We got MS2, MS Para, MS 3x3, even though I have one already. That's a, that's a huge little magic. I have one already. <laughs> here we have a 4 and an MS 5x5, five five, the uh, RS3M 2020. We got a bunch of stickers as well for me to sticker up these puzzles on my own shades so I can properly review them. All right, I'm gonna go uh, least to most exciting. How about we do that? MS 3x3, been there, done that. Let's start there. Come on, come on. Oh wow, it feels the same as my other one. Who would have thought? Two by two. Currently I use a Volk 2 and I'm very, very happy with my Volk 2. So let's see if the MS can change my mind about a main. All right, it feels very, very light and a little bit loose in the corners here. Let's do some first turns. Wow. This two by two feels really fast and hollow, but like not necessarily hollow in a cheap way either. Am I like blown away by this two by two out of the box? No, but also, I don't think any 2x2 in existence would blow my mind out of the box. But you know what? This is a faster cube than the Valk 2, that's for sure. The Valk 2 feels like a much, much sturdier, heavier puzzle. Back in the day, I used to use a Wit Eden Wit 2 as my 2x2 main, and that was a very, very fast 2x2. To this day, I'm not sure what's better, a slow, deliberate turning 2x2 or a just crazy fast one where you can spam TPS, for me at least. This is better than I expected. I'm feeling a 7 out of 10. Stop! Pure time. Those boxes, man, wow. All right, I currently use an X-Men Bell. Whoa. This feels ridiculously fast. I'm getting a ton of locks on it because I can't really control its speed. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I hope there's a way to slow this thing down or something because it's turning is just absolutely lightning fast. The tips feel just as fast as the rest of the puzzle. One of my main issues with Pyramixes is, is that I have a hard time controlling them. To be honest, this isn't trash and I think it exceeded my expectations. The MS line has been very impressive thus far. Is this a Pyramix that's going to take over my bell? I don't really see it doing that. It just seems far too uncontrollable to be something that's viable for me. I think there's some really good Pyramixers who can use the MS well and uh, control its speed, and I think it's a competitively viable puzzle. But out of the box, based on my expectations, I'm feeling a 6 out of 10. Alright, it's time for 4x4. My current 4x4 main is an Aosu Worm. Oh boy, come on! And you know what? I like it very much. Do I think the MS can take over this spot? Probably not, but I thought that with the other puzzles as well and they turned out pretty good, so let's see how this puzzle is. It is really, really luby on the outside. I'm getting a lot of outer layer catches. Ooh. One thing's for sure, this puzzle is fast. I think that's true across all of the MS puzzles. Not really the 3x3, but definitely the 2 and the Para have been really fast so far, so this doesn't surprise me. Here's where I have an issue. For 2x2 and Para spamming TPS events, I kind of like fast puzzles. But for 4 and 5, I like slower, deliberate turning. Otherwise, I feel like the cube gets ahead of me a little bit and it's hard to control. And I'm feeling a lot of that right now out of the box. The turning is just really light 
And, I mean, the lube on the outside isn't helping right now because my hands are slipping, but I can just feel that I'm not controlling the cube that well. So I'll have to dry it off and break it in a little bit more, but uh, this is definitely below expectations. I'm feeling a 4 out of 10. And that leaves 5x5. Five five. To be honest, God knows what 5x5 five five I currently use. I'm not sure what this is. I unboxed it in a previous video, so I mean, if you can find it and let me know, thanks. <laughs> One thing's for sure, this is a good cube. Uh, I don't think this, just like I thought with the 4 before, I don't think this is going to be this, to be honest. Oh, yeah, definitely fast. Definitely luby on the outside. Definitely lacking control. Those inner slices, though, have a very nice sandy feel, but similar to the 4x4, they also, all the layers are locking, like, very badly. Ooh, yikes. This is very, very annoying to turn right now. The combination of locking and just, like, the light turning that feels uncontrollable is just not very pleasant at all. But the feeling is very nice, so that's quite a shame. Uh, but uh, once again, feeling a 4 out of 10 on this one. Bang! Bang! So I think the, uh, the RS3M 2020 has gotten a lot of hype because it's supposed to be a budget customizable cube. Now, if you're unfamiliar in cubing, cubing went through several paradigm shifts with 3x3 hardware. First was the phase of performance. And it was all about how the cube performs, does it pop, does it corner twist, etc. And after that was sort of standardized, next, feeling. Feeling became the most important thing to a puzzle, what differentiated the puzzle, how smooth is it, how crispy is it, stuff like that. And the most recent thing we've been seeing is customization. So brand new cubes like the GAN XS and the Diane Tenyon V2, all these puzzles have so many customizable options, magnets, spring compressions, all that sort of stuff, and that's sort of the new paradigm shift. Unfortunately, a lot of those cubes are really expensive. So, what they did here, what MoYu did here, is said, okay, we're going to take that sort of fad, or that paradigm shift, that focus on 3x3 hardware right now, and we're gonna make a budget option. We got an orange one. It's cheap feeling though, but whatever, stands to stand, you can use it for stand stacking. You know, it's a good thing, too, because I didn't have enough stands already. Anyway, uh, let's just clean this up here. Ooh, feels really interesting. It's got sort of that uh, matte finish to it a little bit. I kind of like that. Oh, wow. That is quite a swishy-feeling puzzle. It's also very, very fast. The turning is not very substantial. It's very light turning. Not a lot of force behind it. I am getting some catches at the moment. But that's to be expected. Ooh, that's to be expected with a new puzzle anyway. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I honestly didn't expect this, that's for sure. It's a pretty swishy puzzle, very unique feeling. Definitely too fast, kind of like some of these MS cubes. Definitely has a locking problem like some of these MS cubes. It sort of fits right in with them. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 because the goods sort of cancel out the bads. Could have been a lot worse for this puzzle. And that, of course, leaves us Mr. M himself. Mr. MV2, he's back and he's better than ever. Look at this right here. Whoa. Stickers, springs, screwdriver, cube stand! Oh yeah! Definitely reminds me of some older Shangshao puzzles. They, uh, I think the Shangshao Pearl had a similar look with the very circular center. Wow. It might be because this is not a fast puzzle, and I'm just used to that after all these, but, you know, it's not fast and locky. It's got good turning speed, actually. Now, it feels incredibly cheap, though, and I am getting some catches. I don't know if I felt a cheaper puzzle other than, like, a Guman Long. It just feels really hollow and just, like, garbage. 
<laughs> also, I think part of the cheap feeling is it's it's absolutely bone dry. Keep in mind that my expectations for Mr. M were low. For that reason, he exceeded expectations. Is this a good cube? No, I'd probably say that the uh, RSM 2020X V2, v whatever, whatever this one is called. I, <laughs> names, hardware names these days, they're so hard to keep track of. Uh, this is probably a better 3x3 and definitely it will be better after setup, but remember that scores are based off of my expectations. And since my expectations were really low on this one and it's not as bad as I thought, I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. Alright, so that is it for this unboxing. We got a bunch of fun puzzles. Thank you to the Cubicle for sending these my way, I really appreciate it. And uh, that's about it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Oh,